Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today I'm going to show you the first proper look at the Waterbox Aquarium's Reef LX270.6, which will be the home for the new angelfish. Now as you know by now, Waterbox have sponsored this project, but I have the freedom to say whatever I want. The opinions in this video are my own, and it may surprise you, but I do actually have one suggestion to Waterbox for improvement. I just haven't told them yet. Having said that, I'll be honest with you, this has been one of the easiest first look videos I've ever made. Waterbox has become well known in the industry for providing a whole range of top of the line aquariums for both fresh and saltwater aquarists, with a sleek modern design and a lot of well thought out features. There are two comments which people who've seen the tank have made. Firstly, it's huge. The tank is 6 feet long by 2.5 feet wide, and 2 feet tall with the total system volume being just under 1,000 litres. It's the depth which makes this tank stand out, because it's deeper than the average aquarium, which in theory should allow for more aquascaping opportunities. The second comment that everyone's made is that it's a stunning tank. I understand what they mean because I felt the same way, but I couldn't quite work out how a glass box and stand could be considered stunning. I've come to the conclusion that it's a combination of the build quality 19mm thick crystal clear glass panels, streamlined aluminium frame and the height of the stand. This extra height means the top of the tank is just under 5.5 feet, which is much closer to eye level than usual and will provide an unobstructed, undistorted view of the livestock without having to bend down. The cabinet also comes with two colour options, black or white, as well as levelling feet and soft closed doors which are a nice touch. Another nice feature is the glass weir box and cover. I'm someone that likes to clean algae off the back glass of the tank, and a couple of my old tanks had plastic weirs, which became easily scratched, and it can take away from the aesthetics of the tank, as algae then starts to grow inside the scratches, leaving green scars. Inside the cabinet houses a large sump, which I'm extremely happy with because it's virtually identical to my old 1000 litre tank, where the water flows in a linear style from one side to the other, and then back into the tank via the return pump. This is by far my favourite type of sump design, as it means each compartment can be easily accessed for cleaning and maintenance of equipment. It's hard enough to get people to do maintenance as it is, and anything which is difficult or frustrating to remove will often get ignored, therefore these quality of life improvements really can be the difference between success and failure of a tank sometimes. It also comes with a removable baffle, so that you can create a larger section if required. The plumbing is all cut to size and ready to install without any gluing, and consists of a precision gate valve for silent operation, main drain, additional safety drain, check valve to prevent backflow, and dual manifold for future reactors. The return also has dual nozzles for improved flow. It all just easily screws in and took me less than 10 minutes. I have to be honest with you, I will be making one adjustment to the sump though. I'm going to be removing the filter sock compartment and replacing it with a filter roller. After 15 years in the hobby, anything that can reduce the workload of my tank is money well spent. I did however notice they had silencers for the socks, which I thought was a good idea, as these can be one of the noisier parts of an aquarium. While on the topic of adjustments, there are a couple which I've already made that don't come standard with the tank, and I felt it was important to point them out in order to prevent any confusion. Firstly, I've had this light installed to make working in the cabinet and filming much easier. Secondly, this hole isn't normally here. This has been drilled through the cabinet and the external wall behind, so that I can connect to a barrel in the coral farm for automatic water changes, as well as an automatic top up for the RO reservoir, and finally, to automatically empty the protein skimmer cup, so I never have to drain it. Technically, if I combine it with some sort of automatic skimmer neck cleaner, I'll never even have to remove the cup. Now although all this sounds very lazy, and it is, and it certainly does come with an extra cost to set up, Planning like this at the beginning can save days, weeks and even months of your life depending on how long you're in the hobby for. It can prevent future back pain, arguments with your spouse over the amount of time you spend on the tank, and just overall significantly improve your experience in the hobby. If you're at the stage where you're setting up a tank, stop and rethink exactly what you're doing now 
to see what you can do to make things easier for you in the long run. Your future self will thank you. This tank will likely sit empty for a month while this is all set up, because once it's full, there's no going back, and I want to make sure I have everything covered. The final adjustment is in the left compartment of the stand, where the large RO reservoir is, which comes as standard. I've had the plug sockets removed off the wall behind and reinstalled by an electrician inside the cabinet, so that I have easy access to them. The cabinet is designed to be well ventilated, and this compartment is almost completely separate from the sump, where most of the humidity is. This side panel can also be removed for easy access if required. On the other side of the cabinet is another secret hidden compartment for the same reason, where you can keep your aquarium controller safe and away from the humidity which can corrode the boards inside them. Now as I said at the beginning, there was one area which I think they could slightly improve on, and it might be just me. Although this tank was very intuitive for me to set up, because I've set up many tanks previously, I couldn't help but notice the instructions could probably do with a little bit more detail for someone new entering the hobby. Having said that, overall, this is without a doubt one of the nicest, highest quality tanks I've ever owned. Waterbox have set a very high bar with regards to standard, and I'm really excited to turn this into a beautiful, thriving reef tank. If the angelfish lets me. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.